If you're looking for the best coiled cable for your setup and you'd also like it to easily and magnetically be unplugged or plugged into a keyboard while looking aesthetically pleasing at the same time, then this could be a type of cable that you may be interested in designing for your own peripherals. So stay tuned. Hello guys and welcome back to Tech Up. In today's video, I finally decided to go ahead and change up my cables for my wireless gaming keyboard as well as my gaming mouse. I decided to do a little mini DIY by making the cables not only modular with the connections, but coiled as well with a couple of magnetic cables that I bought. For quite some time now, I wanted to get rid of the regular micro USB cable that came with my G502 Lightspeed and G915 TKL from Logitech. And if you own these types of peripherals, this cable mod is definitely something you will want to add to your setup. But don't worry if you don't own these, since it will also be a great DIY coiled cable for many other keyboards or mice out there. Anyways, I've really hated these micro USB cables, especially when I have to plug a micro USB connector into my mouse. And I'm pretty sure we've all enjoyed plugging in these types of connectors into our keyboards and mice. No! No! Yeah, I bet we all know that feeling when we attempt to plug in these types of connectors upside down. However, when you go with a magnetic cable that offers magnetic connecting tips, you'll never have to deal with those types of issues ever again. And for those that don't want to physically unplug or plug in their USB Type-C cables from and into their keyboard, this is also something great for them. Therefore, in this video, I'll go ahead and provide you with a step-by-step -step process on how I modified the cables by first providing you with what cables and connections you'll need to get to be able to use these cables with your setup. I'll also list the tools you'll need if you plan on modifying your cables like I did. And in the end, I'll give you my overall experience with them by giving you some suggestions and pointing out some options with this cable setup so then you can determine if it's worth making and designing them for your own keyboard or mouse. Now, when it comes down to creating this magnetic coiled cable, the cables that you will need to get are five pin fast charging magnetic data cables. It's important that you find one with at least a five pin connection since these cables with these magnetic tips provide data transfer. If you see any that don't have a minimum of five pins at the tip of the connector, then you won't be able to use your keyboard and mouse like you would with a regular cable. If you purchase a cable like this one, you'll only be able to charge your peripherals and not be able to use it in a wired configuration. So look for keywords like quick charging or data transfer listed in the description when purchasing them. Personally, a five pin cable like this one is the best choice for this setup. Therefore, I went with a four pack of these cables off Amazon and I added a link to them down below in the description if you plan on using these. Included in this four pack, it will come with four USB type C and micro USB tips that will need to be plugged into your keyboard and mouse. There are also other cable options with more or less cables or colors or even different lengths. But for my setup, I decided to go with four cables, which will be perfect for my day-to-day -day use. Furthermore, if you're going to be using these cables in this type of configuration like me, you'll have to get a female USB type A to female USB type C or micro USB adapter so that you can connect it with the other magnetic cable that will be connected to your PC's USB port. But you could opt out of this adapter and go with a longer cable that's connected to your computer and not buy these twin adapters. Speaking of adapters, there's also one more adapter that I purchased for this coiled cable mod, and that was a pair of female USB type C to male micro USB adapters. If you own a Logitech G502 Lightspeed and would be using it with a magnetic cable, you'll need this adapter so you can magnetically connect the cable to it. If you don't, you won't be able to connect the cable to the mouse due to the design of this deep micro USB port on the mouse. However, it could come in handy for other instances, but if you don't have this type of mouse and don't need it for your setup, it's just an optional adapter. Last but not least, if you're planning on changing the look of your magnetic cable like me, then you'll need to get some paracord so it can replace the previous sleeve. However, if you're not interested in this part and you've found a five pin magnetic cable in a specific color that you'd like and wouldn't want to re-sleeve the cable, then you can skip ahead to where I coil the cable and later attach all the connections. Anyways, onto the paracord. 
I went ahead with a 550 Type 3 black and white camo colorway that would replace the nylon braiding on these magnetic cables. But before re-sleeving the cables, the tools you will need will include a roll of tape and a pair of scissors as well as a soldering kit along with a soldering station and several heat shrink tubes as well as a wire stripper and a heat gun. Lastly, if you're planning on coiling your cable, you'll need a round dowel or a thin round pole. Now, the first step in making this magnetic coiled cable will begin with measuring the length of the cable and how much paracord you're going to need for it if you're planning on re-sleeving it. Since I may need more towards the end of the cable, I decided to play it safe and cut a little more than I needed, roughly three inches more. Once I got the paracord cut, I needed to remove the strings inside of it so I can later feed the magnetic cable into it. Afterwards, I went back to my magnetic cable and decided to cut it near the USB connector in order to take off the current nylon braiding and replace it with my black and white paracord. So I cut several inches away from the end of the cable because when you start stripping the cable later, you can potentially run into some issues by accidentally cutting the wire if you're not carefully stripping it. Anyways, once I got the cable cut, I went ahead and started to begin removing the nylon braiding. And when removing the nylon braiding, I worked on cutting it with scissors near the magnetic connector first and then removing it. Afterwards, I went ahead and went to the cable with the USB connector and did the same thing to remove the nylon braiding as well. Once I got all the braiding removed, I went ahead and used my scissors to cut the remaining part of the nylon that was left near the shielded connectors on both ends. Then I began to put the black and white paracord onto the cable with the magnetic connector first and after some time, I reached the end and grabbed a heat shrink tube that I would feed over the paracord all the way to the end of this cable, which would serve as a cover and holder for this part of the cable. I also added a heat shrink tube to the other cable with the USB connector and left it there for now. Once I completed that, I finally went ahead and stripped the cable with the USB connector and then the other longer cable with the magnetic connector. I then placed another heat shrink tube over this cable and then stripped all four of the smaller wires on it. I also did the same thing on the smaller cable with the USB connector. Afterwards, I had to simply reconnect all four of the small wires so the paracord could be fully sleeved on the entire magnetic cable. But before I went ahead and started to reconnect them with my soldering kit, I placed more heat shrink tubes on the smaller wires. After that, I used my soldering station to solder each of the wires to reconnect the whole cable and the rest is history. Since all you need to do is solder all the cut wires to each color. After that, it's important to check the magnetic cable to see if it works. Once it checked out, I placed all the heat shrink tubes over the soldered connections and went ahead and used the heat gun to heat the shrink tubes. Once everything was insulated and protected, I completed re-sleeving the entire cable. And for some of you who used more paracord, you may have a little more than you need. And if that's the case, you can easily trim it to the length you want it. So the paracord is nice and flush with the cable. After completing that, the heat shrink tubes that were put on earlier would finally go over the shielded connectors on both ends of the cable. And the last part before coiling the cable would be to heat the shrink tubes on both ends so the paracord doesn't move on the cable. Last but not least, the final step will be to coil your cable if you're interested. Like I mentioned earlier, you'll need a round dowel or a thin round pole, which is what I will be using to coil my cables. Once you have that, you'll need to grab a roll of tape and measure the length you'd like the end of the cable to not be coiled at, and then proceed with cutting a decent length of tape to tape the cable near the top of the pole. Once it's been taped this way, you can begin wrapping the cable around the pole in one direction. And when you do this, you will need to keep the cables as close to each other without creating any gaps. And when wrapping it around the pole, you'll also want to wrap the cable tightly. If you don't do this, you'll have a loose and springy coiled cable. By wrapping it tightly and leaving no space between the cables, you'll reach the end where you'll have to tape the other end of the cable to the length you'd like it at. And once you have the cable completely coiled, you can now begin heating it so it holds its shape. When you're at this stage, you'll need to place the cable slightly above the heat gun's nozzle and not bring the cable too close to the nozzle because if you do that, you can burn the sleeve and ruin your cable in the process. Essentially, the goal is to maintain it at a close but reasonable distance and rotate it several of times. There are certainly many methods when heating it and you may find a different way. 
However, once you've heated the cable after several minutes, you have to leave it for a bit to cool off before proceeding to remove the tape on both ends. Once you remove the tape, you'll notice whether the cable is nicely coiled or if it has some spring to it. If it does, then you'll have to recoil the cable once again on the pole and retape it and go through the same process like before with reheating it until you notice the coiled cable becoming stiff and holding its shape. Once you notice that, you've successfully completed coiling your cable. Now, when adding the coiled cables to my setup, I first went ahead and grabbed two plastic cable holders, which I've had for my previous setup, and it can be something you can get if you're interested. These would essentially serve the purpose of being used as holders for the two other magnetic cables I didn't use in the four pack. To get the holders to stay in place, I used some blue tack that I put underneath each of them. Once I did that, I placed the magnetic cables into them like so, and proceeded to plug these cables to my computer. The next thing I worked on was my coiled cables, and I first plugged the female USB-A adapter to the coiled cable, and then plugged the magnetic USB type C tip to the female end of this USB adapter. Afterwards, I plugged the male micro USB adapter into my mouse, and USB type C tip into the adapter for the magnetic connection and then plug the micro USB tip I had into my keyboard. And I was now ready to connect my coiled cable to my keyboard and my mouse easily and magnetically to complete my whole setup. In the end, after going through this whole step-by-step -step process of making these magnetic coiled cables, I was finally glad to be able to put them to good use. Certainly coiling these cables will take some effort and time to make them, but they are perfect for wireless peripherals that will eventually need to be charged. Throughout this DIY process, I made two cables for my setup and realized that even one cable would suffice for both my keyboard and mouse. With a one cable setup, I can charge my keyboard, and if my mouse gets low on battery, I could easily detach the cable from my keyboard and attach it to my mouse. There are various ways you can use these magnetic coiled cables for your own setup. And after completing this DIY, I've enjoyed how quick and easy it is to attach and detach these cables from your peripherals unlike the other standard cables. It's great to be able to have a clean setup with these type of cables and be easily able to quickly remove them if you're looking forward to having a cable-free setup on your desk. Overall, I think that magnetic cables are the way to go, and even though people are starting to use charging docks or wireless charging mouse pads to charge their mice, cables will inevitably always be one of the first and best ways to charge your keyboard and mouse. I personally would like to see magnetic cables replace the standard cables we get with our keyboards and mice, and I believe a future with magnetic cables like this would look better and satisfying. Anyways, let me know if you guys feel the same way and if you'd really like to switch to a magnetic cable setup for your gear. Certainly, these DIY magnetic coiled cables might not be for everyone, but it's definitely an option and an idea worth possibly trying out, because it's a pretty cool cable after using it here. Like always, if you liked this video, please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more interesting content like this, and I hope to see you guys back here for another one.